This is part three of today, Dwayne Bethel Bay. So, um, Miss Phyllis, um, this is um, December the seventh, twenty twenty. Miss Phyllis doesn't want us don't want me to sign the voids anymore. I said okay. I don't know why she doesn't want me to sign the voids. Customers they say that um, they wanted something changed on their ticket. They want this, whatever. You get a void. I don't have many voids. But if a customer, even though I know I have repeated the order, and if but I'm not going to argue with the customer. The customer said that they said they want this, whatever. I'll, you know, no problem. I turn around and I tell the um, the manager I have never did a void. I've been working for Birkin since June of 2016. I have never did a void on my own. Miss Phyllis doesn't want me to sign the voids anymore. In fact, last the last time there was uh, supposed to have been a void was um, Saturday. And I don't think she did a void at all. She gave the money back to the person, to the customer. I told her it was a bait, um, the it was a Spanish speaking. Um, most of the people that come into Burger King are Spanish speaking. Um, they could be from Mexico, El Salvador, South America, that customers to eat. Um, those are, uh, these are predominantly the group, African-American, black, unless they claim a nationality, and the pale skin, white American, unless they claim a nationality, that they like, those that like to be called white American. I would call them pale skin. Uh, and then the United States Navy, the Army, the Marine, and the police. So those are the major groups that come into Bird King. So it, this particular customer was Spanish speaking. And uh, she said she wanted one of the meals to be removed from the ticket. Miss Willis gave her the money back and no, and she didn't do the void. And um, I said, okay, first she was going to a, the other register to do it. I said, it's not that register, it's this register, Miss Phyllis. I just want you to know. And she said, I know. I said, okay. So, but the thing is, um, for the past time, time uh, maybe about a month or a little bit over a month, month she doesn't want me to do voids. I mean, want me to sign the voids. Now, Thomas, if he does a, he told me, when he does a void, I, the paper's there, I sign it. That's how it's always been told for me to do. I don't, I don't know what caused her to not, maybe even more than a month and a half, she doesn't want me to sign a void. Also, um, I, the last time I ate at Burger King was probably, I don't know, it's been over three years over three and a half years okay um so um it's because of my um i chose i choose to prepare my food or you know i eat um i'm very i try to stick to my diet as much as i can um doesn't take much to get me sick um so I, you know like for instance these are gluten-free potato chips organic you know i have to be careful with those um <laughs> and doesn't take much so um I'm on my, so I'm eating according to the chemistry of my body. So, now for a while it was said that when employees um, order food, you're supposed to type in their name. And so that's what I was doing. I think the last time I ate at Burger King was probably maybe seven months after I stopped working there. So it's been that long, maybe six months or seven months after I stopped working. And I was eating, and even then I was eating um, veggie, burgers, salad, and I was winging myself off fish, winging Imani and I off fish. So that was probably the last time, and so I've been there since um, of June of 2016. So that's um, that's a very, very long time ago, and even then after that, I think I was just buying orange juice, and then I stopped buying orange juice. Um, I started looking at um, making sure that my orange juice has calcium in it, Sometimes I buy organic orange juice. I'm at Whole Foods right now. But so um, the thing is, I didn't, you know, I was told that we should, uh, first it was told that the, um, the employees should uh, sign the ticket. Um, it's okay for the employees that want to buy food to buy for their families if they come in, you know. So they, I would, you know, as a cashier, I would say sign the ticket or here's your ticket. Can you sign it? Then I was told by the manager, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Miss Phyllis, um, that they don't have to sign a ticket. And then I was told to put the, um, there's a way you can type in their name, so I would type in their name. Then I was told, I'm pretty sure, I don't remember who, it just went back, 
um, I don't remember who said it or whatever, but I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% sure, I'm going to put nine times out of ten, Miss Phyllis is the day shift manager, so you don't have to um, um, type in the name. Usually Tom is, um, is, um, would say something, and then Miss Phyllis will go back and say you don't have to. But um, um, they seem to be work. They work as a team together, back and forth. So I don't know what the, what I just do what they tell me to do. So um, maybe a month ago, approximately or three weeks ago, Thomas, because it's been a while. No one. It's been a while. No one. Um, I don't tell them to sign a ticket, and I don't type in a name. So the coworkers. Um, Thomas, um, I think maybe a week and a, two weeks ago, Thomas told me to um, type in the name again for the coworkers who want to purchase food. They can either get the money, get the uh, money taken out of their check, or they can pay 50%. Um, when I tried to do this last week with Miss Phyllis working, she said you don't have to do that. I said okay. So that's you know, I'll leave it at that. So, but I find it odd because it's going now. It's like you know, it's like why are they going back and forth with this? Um, allergic. I used to always tell the cooks when the customers say they are allergic. Always. I was told by Miss Phyllis and Thomas that I don't have to say that anymore. I don't have to say if a customer say like for instance today or was it today that someone said. Um, oh yes, it was today. Someone said remove the mayonnaise because he's allergic. He's allergic to mayonnaise. I, he said, "Can you tell him I'm allergic?" I said, "Yes." The customer said, "Tell you, um, Thomas, that he's allergic." Before, even when the customers didn't say tell the um, cook or the manager, to, I mean, I was thinking I was preventing a lawsuit, preventing a lot. If a customer at the register deliberately say I'm allergic. I, I will go and turn around and tell the cooks so possibly they can go that extra mile to make sure whatever item that they don't want on that burger not be on the burger. But Thomas and his Phyllis said, I do not have to tell them, um, the cooks, that the customer said allergic. I said, okay. Um... going to continue with my thought process. So some of the things I realized um, in reference to um, a situation with um, my managers, Miss Phyllis, um, there was once again um, a situation where a black male, he's a regular, he would come into Burger King and order a senior cup. He used to sit around the table where the other black males would sit that will represent the Navy, the Army, and the Marines. He would sit across from, the, uh, from them that represented the United States military. And he would order a senior cup, but the, uh, Ms. Phyllis would give him a medium. I noticed this too started to happen after the pandemic, after the, there were a, pro, a procedure um, that was placed in reference to the corona pandemic. I don't remember him behaving this way before. So, um, in fact, um, and at this time, I remember Burger King was um, had few items available. Um, this is when um, I, the stimulus check. People were waiting on the stimulus check. The businesses were waiting. This is when the businesses were closing down. Uh, they were shut down. Only um, those businesses that um, were able to prove that they are, um, there's a, uh, they were an essential business, were able to stay open. So a regular black male who would sit around the table where the other black males would sit, that represented Navy and Army, um, started to come in. He has been coming in, but literally he would ask for a senior cup and Miss Phyllis would give him a medium or a large, or the co-workers would give it to him. And I wouldn't do it. And then when I, one day, he actually 
um, when he when I was giving him what he paid for the senior cup is seventy nine cents. Um, a large cup is over two dollars and thirty two cents. A medium cup is two dollars and thirty two cents. A small, so you can see the price difference. A senior cup, if I if unless it, it's seventy nine cents, I could be off. I'm trying to. I'm a little irritated right now, but it's a big price difference. Okay. So he got, he was irritated because he wanted me, I took the order, he wanted me to give him a larger cup than what he paid for. I wouldn't do it. But um, I remember um, after, uh, I think Tom, Miss um, Phyllis did it, he said it was okay for it to be done. I said, okay. I said, well, if Miss Phyllis says it's okay, then I'm gonna do it. When I worked with Thomas, Thomas said it's not okay. And Dora, a Spanish-speaking lady, she's from El Salvador, she was about to give him a, a larger cup as well, even though he paid for a senior. She said, oh, I didn't know. I remember, because she was she was like, I didn't know. I, I thought, you know, she did like this. I didn't know, you know. And I said, okay. So I said, sir, the Thomas said it's not okay. And this, once again, started after the coronavirus pandemic. Then, um, what else happened? So, Miss Phyllis uh, then said, um, and when I would work with her, she continued. I, I, what I did was I told Carl, the manager, the owner, about it. And he said definitely he was not supposed to be getting a larger cup if he paying for something small. Okay? And, that, and I remember even Thomas said, you know, man, pay for a larger cup, you know? So, and this is when also, once again, when Burger King was only had a few items, a lot of items were not available for many reasons. I can only assume it was because of the pandemic and many, and many um, businesses shutting down, people are not were spending any money. So, um, but Burger King was considered essential because it was able to stay open, it has a drive through um, so um, that sort of thing. So, um, but Miss Phyllis continued to give him a larger cup, and what what the, what happened was the guy got upset with me for not doing, not giving him a larger cup, even though he paid for a senior cup. He also came into Burger King and said that I didn't give him back his change. His change was like eleven dollars and some odd cent. My my jewel has never been short. And then I told him, I said, um, as he was walking out, I thought about it because he's a regular. I said, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I gave him his change back. I told Thomas, as he, I said, Thomas, that guy, he lied. I think I gave him his change back. I said, can you count down the drawer? He said, I can't do it right now. Um, but uh, he said, you should have told me right now. I said, I'm telling you, can, I mean, I haven't taken any more customer's orders. No one, I mean, nothing's happened to the drawer. He's the last one that I dealt with. Can you count the drawer down? He said, no. After um, my shift, he counted the drawer down, and sure enough, my drawer was uh, short. The amount of change that I, I suppose I'd given back to him. So he um, lied and said I didn't give back his change. And this is after the confusion with the cup him paying for a senior cup and one of a larger one. So after Carl told me that the guy was not supposed to be drinking from a, I mean, um, getting a larger cup after he paid for a senior, I, I stood with what Carl said. But Miss Phyllis was still giving him, even then, a larger cup. And she got mad at me, because I, I think I told him, I said, sir, I can't give you a larger cup, because he was trying to say something on the um, front line he was like I, I want a medium cup or you know even though he paid for a small cup or a senior cup he wanted a medium or large and Miss Phyllis um, and I told Miss Phyllis after he left I said Miss Phyllis he also stole money he said that I didn't give him his change and I did he, he also stole money from Burger King he's not he, he's not only getting a free cup but he also stole money and she called me a thief she said you the thief? I said, I'm the thief. Why am I the thief? He, she said, I'm the thief. I said, what did I steal from Burger King? And he, <laughs> to defend him. 
instead of um, just saying, you know, um, you're right. My drawer has never been short. And she called me a thief. Then her, I remember her and Thomas said, actually, if you, you want to get technical, you're supposed to get a, this is the courtesy cup of water. This is what you're supposed to drink out of. I said, oh, okay, so this is the first time I've heard that. Usually, um, we, as employees, we, we grab any cup you, we want uh, to drink out of. They said, this is the, this, now this once again just happened during this pandemic. So I, I can't remember exactly what month, but I did document it. Um, and it's now December the 720. He said, this is the cup all employees are supposed to drink out of. I said, this is the first time I heard that. You know, I've been working for Burger King since June of 2016. Then um, I started to bring my own cup. It was a purple cup. I brought my own cup, and if I forgot to get my own cup, then I use one of these cups. And only I only drink water. I don't drink soda. I don't drink fruit punch. I don't drink sweet tea. I don't drink unsweet tea. My diet consists of usually water, prune juice, um, orange juice that I buy at Whole Foods or at the grocery store. So at Berkey, I always only just drink water. But yet, um, so I, anyway, so I'm just saying that. So I was like, that's the first time I heard it. Since then, employees, they get medium, large cups, small cups, or I mean, or I should say small, uh, medium and small cups. You know, I asked them, I said, what have you been getting? I just let them tell me because obviously things um, are, um, it's not consistent. I should say the rules of what they, what the managers are telling me are not consistent. Another situation happened. I was preparing French toast sticks. I'm using, and um, I told um, one of the French toast sticks fell out as I was trying to stick it in. This is early one morning. As I was trying to stick it in the bag. It was a three piece French toast stick, I think it was. And it fell out onto the bin. So quickly, I thought the best solution would be, it wasn't in the bin, it was outside the bin, where we lay up against, where we put our hands on, was to throw away the French toast stick and ask the cook to drop one quickly. It doesn't take long for French toast sticks to cook. Miss Phyllis came over towards me, asking about it like she was ready to fight. And I said, Miss Phyllis, the French toast stick came, um, fell out by mistake. And, and she, um, um, I remember she started to curse as though I did it on purpose. I remember I documented this because I was so surprised. I mean, this is not the first time how she come and um, walking towards me like she's ready to fight. And once again, I'm, I did not know her husband definitely was um, a reti retired from the Navy. And to tell you the truth, I mean, it shouldn't matter. But now, I, when I think about, I'm like, why is she behaving this way towards me? Especially a lot of times when um, the Navy, those that have the Navy emblem, they either um, working with DoorDash, Uber Eats, or they come in since the pandemic, or uh, before, when they would be sitting at the table for hours at a time, the Army. You know, I was like, you know, all of a sudden she would be, she would behave in a certain manner. I even heard her say, use the word brother. Um, I hear her use the word paid sometimes. So, I'm, you know, I'm like, because I don't understand. All the things she has done, you would think she know me. You would think that we are, we have been friends to one another. We befriended one another. No, I just come in and do my job and leave. You know, she's a she's a manager. I have to communicate with her. I didn't know the Naval Academy was two miles behind Burger King. Many people, you have Spanish, Mexican, those are or else you have people that speak Spanish that are in the military, the Navy. Not just African American and the pale skin. I did not know it was two miles behind Burger King. I had no idea until maybe approximately a year ago or a year and a half ago, other or a year, a few months ago or, or so forth. I, 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 I had no idea 
as a Moorish American, when we see military, they are supposed to be protectors, the Navy and the Army, of American citizens as they pursue their actual freedom. So to see someone who says they are in the Navy or the Army, we are not supposed to look at them and think that they could be a terrorist or behave in an abusive manner because they supposed to have uphold, taken an oath or affirm to uphold these laws of freedom. Once again, I had no idea. I just assumed when I, they would come in, you know, I said it, was, it must be close, but I didn't know how close it was. And I didn't pay attention to the, recruit, the recruitment center across the street from Burger King as Moorish Americans who affirm to uphold the Constitution of 1787, the 13th Amendment 20th section, more in um, all four of Abraham Lincoln's proclamations. We are taught and encouraged to respect laws. We, we are in natural law, and we, we respect those who have bled so that we can walk upon this landmass and not be terrorized. So um, let me think something else that's out. Even as I say that right now, I'm feeling a, far, a short, a four sharp pain right here. And so in that, in all the times that I've given testimony at Burger King of feeling, experiencing four sharp pains, I think about the hospitals and the medical center. You have two types of hospitals. You have the hospitals that are created for healing. The medical system, you know they're created for healing. That means they're not going to deliberately cause a, a cause something to happen where they can have more patients, where they can have more patients and make profit. And then you have those hospitals and medical systems that are not created for healing. So if you ha um, if so if you are an, a military force that are, has not naturalized to uphold laws of freedom you are easily to be used as a terrorist. And so, and you're dealing with banks and corrupt banks. So if you are a hospital, okay, who truly don't care about the patients, you are trying to make a profit. Sickness brings you profit. You will do certain things to create or maintain a sickness in the population. I started giving testimony about the four sharp pains I was experiencing as I was earning money at Burger King. I'm not accusing anyone. I don't know where they're coming from because Imani and I, um, we as Moorish Americans, we reject the telepathic code. So I have no idea. And now we're not able to send four sharp pains. And this is on a spiritual, this is not, now I'm separating spiritual and mental testimony now from what I just gave testimony about that was um, on the physical plane about my managers. Now I'm speaking on a spiritual, mental um, 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 level. And so I don't, we don't know where they're coming from. I'm not able to send forth sharp pains, and I wouldn't want to. That's all connected to upholding natural laws of freedom. I would not want to. But those who have not and are used by a foreign entity, why wouldn't they do it? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they be involved in illegal organ selling? Illegal organ selling. I'm not accusing, I'm, not, I'm just giving testimony. So today was a very stressful day. And so on a spiritual, mental um, level, I experienced four sharp pains many times. I can't tell you how many times. It's like a daily ritual. It's just like when I gave testimony about the black male coming into Burger King with the army emblem on the back of his truck, singing how he, how we gonna get this soul. He kept singing how we gonna get this soul around Burger King. And once again, I didn't know the Naval Academy was two miles, but definitely then, this was in 2017, was two miles behind Burger King or the army recruitment. I didn't pay any attention to it. But yes, the regulars were coming in saying things that I heard at American Extended Stay. They were saying words. Um, and, and yes, there were pale skins that came in that implied or were connected to the Navy and the Army. And there were African-Americans and, and Spanish-speaking. 
So um, the black male, we were singing for about over 10 minutes around Burger King about how he was sweating. He was just walking from the back of Burger King all around Burger King singing about how we're going to get this soul as like a ritual. And he had the army emblem on the back of it. So when you force in sharp pains constantly, that can that is definitely a ritual. So I'm gonna just leave that testimony for right now and then um, I'll talk to you later. I think what else I wanna give testimony about before I end. And if you're not in a constitutional fold, then you are definitely being used in a, another jurisdiction, a foreign jurisdiction, a foreign a foreign entity is using you. And if they don't, if they're not, if that's foreign, of course they'll use you as a terrorist to terrorize. I remember when the pandemic first started to happen, I would constantly write down um, like certain things, um, like right now when I watched, because um, at one time when it first happened, CJ sent the email and the, the letters are still up, hanging up, that they wanted us to wash our hands, wash um, the, the bowls, use the bowls, the trays, every 30 minutes. No one, it, it, I, I was being critis uh, criticized for washing my hands and changing my gloves and doing what CJ, the owner's son who does the schedule, said do. I was I was being criticized it, and the manager started making make it seem like I was just walking around doing nothing, going to the back, doing nothing. When I was actually going to go wash my hands, change my gloves and do the trays like they asked me to do, like they had the sign sign the sand. And then I would look in the drive-thru and nobody would be using, I mean, I would say very few. I didn't see anyone using the trays until after the inspection. But I would use the trays. And um, I would literally be criticized. Like, um, they would seem, make it um, seem as though I was trying to walk away from doing my job. Like, where's Rhonda? Rhonda, Rhonda, call my name when they know that the letter said, uh, uh, when the, it's, this is when the pandemic first happened wash your hands change your gloves every 30 minutes and I was being threatened to be sent home or lose my job so I would just literally just stand there and I would, I would you know I was like okay I'm not going to wash my hands and change my gloves like that and, and still to this day I, I am careful about when I do it because I the, just, just like the manager saying mo and stuff and, and so forth I don't know they might get upset and try to send me home so these are the things that have been inconsistent, uh, and then, and yet it seemed to only be with me, and I'm only doing what they, I'm trying to do, what Burger King asked me to do. So I would write down the reason why I was writing it down to keep up with it because I didn't know how deadly the coronavirus was. This is when it first happened. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it was going to be over in a couple of months. I didn't know. I didn't, we had. I had no idea. But I know what. Um, I know the changes were happening. I mean, if they were shutting businesses down, only essential businesses could stay open. We needed to take it seriously. I noticed um, sometimes um, some customers that look to be connected to the police, possibly, or the military, they would come in deliberately, it seemed like, with no mask on. I had to be careful because I could literally serve someone with no mask. And it looked like, I, um, I think, I, I never read up on it, but I was told and um, from the managers that the businesses can be fined for serving people with no mask. I'm trying to think of something else that I, I thought just find odd that I experienced. A lot of times with Phyllis, um, I documented how she didn't want me to be in the drive through You know, she didn't want me close to her. She said she didn't want me, want me to touch her. You know, just stuff, things that just didn't make sense. You would think I knew her personally. Once again, and so last week, or week, or week and a half, when I heard her speak about how her husband's a retired person from the Navy, I started to think about 
the time, so many times hearing people or voices in the room saying brother and military, my tablet, advertisement about the Navy or um, the AARP, I think it's called, or what, what is it called, the, that, not AARP, but the, um, the credit card that they use, uh, the, uh, the credit system. Uh, the credit card that they use. Many of them come into Burger King with it. So um, sometimes I wonder if that's, you know, is, is there a connection? Because she spoke about her husband being in the Navy or retired from the Navy so loud about a week and a half ago. And that's, and it's, I've been working there since June of 2016. Never, I thought I heard her say it maybe, uh, maybe seven, eight months ago. I wasn't sure. But it was definitely, she said it loud, so I couldn't help it. So Islam, I'm going to, um, let me think, is there anything else before? Today, after um, Mr. Thomas kept saying um, Mo, I mean, he said Mo to me, and I corrected him, I know his customers was, were actually coming into Burger King, pale skin customers, and um, those from Uber East were actually saying Mo as well. So um, either, I thought that was odd. Like they'll walk to the counter and say Mo. And like it, it was, I ignored it because I know I just got through speaking to, I just corrected Thomas on the front line and told him that he could be sued, I can sue him for harassment and discrimination. Because we, I, I went through the steps and told Carl and he denied it, and he still kept saying Mo to the customers. I stay quiet. I need my job. But then he gonna address me as Mo. It's like I'm going. You. It's like I'm gonna deliberately and forcefully um, uh, violate your constitutional rights, violate your um, rights to be here because of whatever reason. So I noticed customers. Um, would come as they walked up they could a, a few times I've heard this before I've seen this before they um, working for Uber Eats a lot of the Navy and the Army um, um, people are um, they have Navy emblems or mainly mainly um, Navy um, work uh, a lot of them work for I've seen a lot of them work for Uber Eats or DoorDash as a side job so um, I've, so I seen them. Um, I've heard them as they approach every once in a while. Sometimes, especially when Thomas starts saying "mo" quite a bit, address me, um, address the cat, me, and look at me as "mo." I, I played off because they're customers. I'm not gonna argue. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to keep my job. I'm not gonna argue with a customer. But today it was happening a lot after I corrected Thomas Islam, and I'm gonna end um, this video with that.